folks, and welcome to another edition of Writer's Life Academy. My name is Stephen R. Burns. Uh, I'm an editor, writer, and um, the creator of the online course, How to Write in 90 Minutes. And today we got a good one for you. And it's about avoiding cliches and why that's important. If you're a sports fan or you live with them, you know what the cliches are, right? Right, when they interview them after the game. Well, uh, I just wanted to drive the ball really hard and, uh, you know, I just... You know, my teammates made this journey possible. Just want to give 150%, leave it all on the field. That's very, very typical for sports fans. And it's okay, right? Cliches are safe for them, not for writers. If a writer wanted to, uh, was to speak in cliches, would it be, well, you know, Adam, those reviews cut like a knife. You can sell a million books, but everyone knows it's not the end, but the journey. And those people criticizing, they sit in glass houses. And they're afraid because they jump when they see their shadow. They woke up on the wrong side of bed. They opened a can of worms. But I'll tell you, their stuff is dead as a doornail. And there are plenty of fish in the sea. So when we talk about cliches, we're going to talk about why. But before I go on, I just wanted to mention that there is a special offer that I have at the end of this video. So stay till the end. And it's a really, it's an important one. And it's close to my heart. So I hope you guys uh, stick with me through this. And we'll go through it. Number one, writing cliches comes from a lack of reading i i listen if you only read you know a few thriller authors or you know a couple of articles on the internet you're gonna write cliches that that's how it goes because you have to expand your vocabulary you have to expand your ability guys to look at things and make comparisons that are original and and you just you can't do it if you don't read now i talked about the importance of reading both in my course and other places but i'm adamant about it with my students and clients you simply got to read more widely i want to let you in on something i wouldn't call it a secret but there is a lot of bad writing out there especially now because content is so important and it's the driving force on the internet so you're going to read bad writing and then you're going to end up copying it and the writing when you write cliches it causes your readers to skim. That's why it's so important. And here's the other thing. If you don't read enough, you won't be able to tell if something is written well. I mean, I'm, I'm a sports fan, so eat up all the content. But sometimes it's just stats and stuff, right? It, it's not really good writing. And for a lot of writers, they're doing their best at it, but they just, <laughs> they're just not good at it, right? So this is true for everything. So whether it's fitness or fashion, or whatever you're interested in, so read widely then you'll be able to tell the difference. Now, number two, writing cliches happens to all beginners. If you're new at this process, you're gonna use cliches. That's how it works. And since I'm aiming these videos at beginners and students trying to improve, I don't want you to worry about it. I know that sounds like I'm contradicting myself, but just hear me out. I want you to work at it, but don't worry about it. I care more about you trying to write and putting words on the page than perfection. I talked about that in my video on avoiding writer's block. Learn to just do it have the guts and the self-awareness to write badly. And if you do that, you will get better. I promise. Now I'm going to give you two tips on how to avoid writing cliches in a second. But if you commit to reading more widely and acknowledge that, yeah, I'll probably end up using some cliches. That's an unbelievable start. Now you'll hear this a lot from me. A good portion of learning to write well is, is self-awareness and guts. You have to know what you don't do well to get better at it, right? It's like anything. If I'm learning how to knit, and I have a problem with a particular pattern, that's okay. I know what I have to address. If I'm a basketball player and I can't use my left hand, it's okay, I know what I have to work on. So maybe it's a problem right now. You're starting out, that's okay. Apply these next two tips and you're gonna improve immediately. So tip number one, avoid similes and metaphors. The easiest way to avoid writing cliches is to avoid using similes and metaphors. Don't use them unless you must. Um, yeah, okay, let me go over what they are. A simile is a description of one thing using a thing of a different kind used to make a description more vivid. Crazy like a fox. Yes, that's a cliche. A metaphor is a figure of speech that describes an object or an action in a way that isn't literally true, but helps explain an idea or make a comparison. So black sheep, cold feet. And yes, those are cliches. This is where you get them, guys. This is their stomping ground. When you eliminate all but your original metaphors and similes, your writing improves immediately. You want to paint original pictures. Here's one of mine. 
They gather around her like pigeons at a hot dog stand. It paints the picture and allows the connection between the description to the reader, and then it anchors it. But if it's a cliche, they don't see it. It's going to be skimmed. Number two, the second tip. <clears throat> Consider why you chose that language comparison and try to think of something else. If you want to avoid writing cliches, you have to understand what you're trying to say and then dig. <laughs> it requires effort. It's the difference between, I don't know, filling a kiddie pool with water and an in-ground pool, right? One is deep, one is shallow. One requires a ton of effort. One requires thought, the other doesn't. Let me expand on that a little. You've heard it cuts like a hot knife through butter. Okay, what else cuts quickly? A hot knife through butter implies speed, but it's so common. Let's make it more original. And then it has to make sense. Let me give you an example. If I said they were moving like a taxi during rush hour, what am I saying? Is there a picture? Is it slow or fast? That picture creates an inward nod for the reader and it does it in one sentence without slowing the pace. What you would have to spend paragraphs on to explain fully. The concept, guys, of a picture is worth a thousand words is not a cliche, it's a truism. Well, when you apply it, not when you use it. In this case, it's one sentence. And it's not just true in fiction, it's true of nonfiction as well. Whether you're writing a sales copy or an essay or a blog. I hope that helps. Remember, we want to read widely and you want to consider why you're using a certain comparison or a certain type of language. And remember, rewriting is re writing is rewriting. So when you go back and edit, it's okay on first draft to just get the work down. I always say, just get the work down. But when you go back, look and see, is this a cliche? Is this something that's used all the time? Can I think of something better? And if not, it's okay not to have comparisons. It is. It's much better to have clean, shorter sentences than it is to have cliches in your writing. All right, guys. Once again, and I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I have a special this week that I'm going to put the link down below for my course, how to write in 90.com. And that's nine zero, how to write in 90.com. You can go there. And for the next two weeks, I'm offering 75% off my course. And the reason I'm doing it is this. When I was young growing up and I was a member of the YMCA, that's where my family took us to swim. I later became a lifeguard there. And I remember in the small town that I grew up that unlike the other places where you could work out, the other pools, the YMCA had a policy that they adjusted what you paid as a member based on your income level. What I want to do in the next two weeks is if you know somebody who you think could use this course, whether it's a student, whether it's a, someone starting a new business, whether it's someone, and they, you know they don't have a lot of money, or maybe it's you, just go to howtowriten90.com. You can register. All you need is an email address. You apply the coupon YMCA, all capitals, YMCA, and I will give you 75% off of the course, okay? Now, the course already comes with a money-back guarantee, but I want to make it accessible to you and to those who really need it because that's the goal of all these videos is to teach and coach, make it all accessible for you guys so that I can help you move forward. All right, my friends. We'll talk soon. Take care.